yes, Ms. Harris, I am so excited for this road trip that we've just planned. I got all of our places that we're going to go mapped out, and I tried to pick the places you wanted from your email. So, I've got one ahead right now and mapped it out. We're going to obviously start here in Chesapeake, where it's home, and then, of course, soccer is my favorite sport, so we're going up to the Soccer Hall of Fame in uh, New I'm York. Kind of yeah, that and the World cool. Cup just yeah, happened. Definitely. So then I looked at your list in the email and your favorite place that you wanted to go was the Spam Museum because who wouldn't, right? So we're going to travel across here. Spam Museum is in what? Minnesota? Minnesota. Okay. And then you said we couldn't do a road trip without going to see the biggest ball of twine. So mm -hmm. that's where we're going to travel down into Absolutely. Kansas. And then because we're nerd birds, we want to go to the Four Corners, right? Yeah, definitely. Where the four states intersect. And then lastly, we're going to go down to the Alamo to finish off our little road trip. But we're probably going to be a little bit tired. Yeah, I've already so. looked into it. I think um, I think we've got plane tickets set up, so we should be good to fly home and not have to worry about it. Perfect. So does that look good? You yeah. think that's going to work out? I'm so excited. Do you think this fanny pack's big enough to hold everything? No. I mean, I've, I mean, got, I've got hand sanitizer, and i got my camera. I'm ready. Right? you're going to take tons of we're selfies, good. right? Yeah, yeah. at every place. Old school selfie. Yeah. Ready? Okay. Oh, ready? Bet. Road trip. Mr. Perez says we got to do some calculations on our way, figure out where we're going to stop for gas and whatnot. So, so we're going to have to use the midpoint and the distance formulas because we can figure out, you know, midway between we'll probably have to have some gas. Yeah. And then we do need to find the total distance because we are running a car and we're trying to keep costs down. So we're going to have go ahead and go through this lesson 1.7 midpoint and distance with you guys. All right. So before we get into the actual calculations of midpoint on a coordinate plane, distance on a coordinate plane, which is what we're going to need for our road trip, we do need to talk about a couple of different things and how midpoint can help us calculate. Well, back when we learned about segments, section 1.3, we talked about segment by our, the midpoint. We're going to talk about specifically the segment bisector today. And that's a point, a line, a plane, anything that cuts a segment in half in exactly two equal spots. So if we're looking over here, We've got this segment that, or this line that just showed up, line RS, and it's a segment bisector. So what it does is it tells us that from A to M, we're exactly the same distance, so we're congruent to the segment from M to B. So if you remember those markings from before, that way when we set up equations, we can set things equal. So in this picture, LN is the segment bisector. So what that means again, and I recommend marking it, pause it, draw it, mark it. Um, we know that since this is the bisector, WM is congruent to MX. Using the information provided, I want to be able to find MX. So if they're congruent, then they're equal. And I can set up the following equation. Hopefully you've tried this on your own already. If not, pause it now. So 7Z minus 24 is equal to 6Z minus 2. All right, so I'm going to skip the individual pieces of the algebra, and I'm just going to go ahead and solve it. 60 goes to the other side, giving me z. 24, I'm going to add it to the other side, giving me 22. So we've got our final answer of z equals 22, but our task is to find mx. So we're going to plug that back in. 6 times 22 minus 2. This is 132 minus 2, and I get 130. So my total distance or length from M to X is 130. All right. So what about if, the mid, if we're trying to find the midpoint when it's on the coordinate plane? To find the midpoint, we're going to use this formula. Now, I teach midpoint using the formula. So that's what we're going to do number one with. Ms. Hurst does a completely different way, so she's going to show you her way on number two. And you guys can decide, watching both methods, which one works for you and which one makes sense in your head, and choose whichever one, and then go ahead and stick with that method every time. So first off, when you're given two points, x1 and y1, okay, if that's point one, and then x2, y2, you can find the midpoint, or I always tell you to think of it as the average. Okay, what's right there in the middle of your line segment, okay, the midpoint. By using x1 plus x2, and then we're dividing it by 2 because you're trying to find the average of the two numbers. And then you do the same with the y's, and your x's have to come first in the equation because your final answer will be a point on the graph. 
So looking at number one, we have, and if it helps you, you can label x1, y1, x2, y2, and then you can plug it right into the formula. So midpoint, okay, x1, 6 plus um, x2 would be negative 2 divided by 2, comma, let's do the y's, 9 plus 3 and divide by 2. So now what we're going to do is go ahead and simplify this. 6 plus a negative 2 leaves you with 4 over 2. 9 plus 3 leaves you with 12 over 2. And then we can simplify those fractions even further to find the midpoint to be 2, 6. Okay? So that's your final answer. All right, now I like to think of midpoint while we are really excited about using it as sad. And this is what I mean by it. So we're going to make this into an acronym, stack, so that my x's and my y's line up on top of each other. And then we're going to add straight down. And then I'm going to take the result of that and divide by 2. Okay, so we're still doing the same process. It's just going to be organized a little bit differently. So I'm going to take point C, negative 5, 3, and I'm going to stack point D right underneath of it to negative 9. So we have an X column and we have a Y column. All right, we're going to add these together. Negative 5 plus 2, I get negative 3. 3 plus negative 9, I get negative 6. Now again, remember, we've got to still divide by 2. So I'm going to take this whole thing and divide by 2. My final answer is still going to be an ordered pair, just like Ms. White's was. Negative 3 over 2 does not simplify, so I'm going to leave it as a fraction. You're more than welcome to leave it as a decimal, negative 1.5. And then negative 6 divided by 2, I get negative 3. So this is the midpoint between C and D. All right. Okay, so actually, I say you need to memorize this formula since, you know, Miss Hurst is kind of a saying. But if you're going to use my method, you have to have it memorized. It is not on your formula sheet. And the SOL in this course, you will see midpoint within different shapes, all over graphs. So just need to know it and embed it somehow in your brain. Now, here's another way that uses the terminology midpoint. But we're actually not going to plug it into the equation because we're trying to find the missing endpoint. So what I always tell you guys to do is read through and just draw out a line segment okay, with the endpoints. And it says the coordinates of point R are given, but I'm just going to label R here, and the midpoint of RS, so we know that S is over here, and our midpoint, I'm just going to label that as M, because that stands for midpoint. Um, and it says the midpoint is negative 1, negative 3, and then R is at 2, 2. We're trying to find this other endpoint, S. That's not given. So let's remember that the midpoint means it's equal on both sides. So you have to travel the same amount of distance. So what I always tell you guys to do is think of the number line, and we're going to start with our x value first. And on the number line, when you travel from 2 to a negative 1, you are going minus 3 down 3 on the number line. So we have to go the same distance to get to point s. We're still going to go down 3, but we're going to start with negative 1. So negative 1 minus 3 leaves you at a negative 4. Okay? You're going to do the same process, but use the y value. So we're going to go from 2 to a negative 3 on the number line, ends up going down 5. So we have to continue and go down 5, but remember we're going to go negative 3 minus 5, okay, to leave us at a negative 8. So our other endpoint, S, is going to be at the point for negative 8. So go ahead and um, the second one is up here. Pause and see if you can get the answer before Ms. Hurst goes over it with you guys. All right, so if you're working with this, hopefully you drew a segment just like Ms. White told you to. And we're going to put it up and it says again, this is segment RS. So R and S are going to be my endpoints. It tells me the midpoint, M, as Ms. White called it, is 4, 9. So this is 4, 9. R, they tell us, is 9, 7. So I'm going to label that. And now we're trying to find S. So if you did this the way that we taught you, we're going to go from 9 to 4, looking at my X values. And that's going to be a minus 5 to get there. So from 4 to my next X value, we're going to do minus 5 again, giving us negative 1. To go from 7 
to 9, my next y value, I'm actually adding 2 this time. So we've got to add 2 to get to my last y coordinate of my endpoint. So 9 plus 2 is 11. So our endpoint s is at negative 1, 11. All right, so the second and last formula that you do need to have memorized um, is called the distance formula, which means the distance between point A and point B. Another indication to in a, any word problem is if it asks you for the length of AB, okay? Because sometimes it won't say, just find me the distance, it'll say what is the length, because you're going to find how far it is from point A to point B. So on our road trip on our map, we're going to use those endpoints and then use this formula to figure out how far it is from place to place. Um, somehow you're going to have to memorize this. If you guys can come up with some creative way to memorize this longer formula, um, we would like you to write that down for tonight in your notes because we have some creative ways to help you remember because there's a lot of things going on in this equation. It's the square root of x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. So that's how you find the distance. So let's go ahead and do one together. Okay, We're going to find the distance between point C and D. So Remember notation, CD put together um, means that, that we're going to get a number. And if it helps you, once again, x1, y1, x2, y2. So parentheses, 5 minus a 1 squared, so that's x2 minus x1, plus, your, go ahead and subtract your y's, y2 minus y1, and square it. So step by step, we keep the square root to the end. We do what's in parentheses first. So 5 minus 2 is 4 squared. I'm sorry, 5 minus 1 is 4 squared, plus 4 minus 1 is 3 squared. Okay, so just did what's in parentheses, then we're going to go ahead and square both those numbers. 16 plus 9, 4 squared and 3 squared. We'll leave you with the square root of 25. And hopefully, if you're not great at squares and square roots, by the end of this course you will be, because the square root of 25 is 5. Okay, so that's the distance between points C and D on a graph. I'm going to go ahead and show you um, three other problems that we'd like you to pause it and work it out on your own, and then come back and check with us to make sure that you got all the answers correct. Now you can leave your answers as either a radical, um, which it would be something like the square root of 25, if it's not a perfect square, or you can give us the decimal version of it. We always recommend you round to the nearest hundredth, so that would be two decimal places. The example we did happened to work out to be a perfect square, so we didn't have to worry about both methods. All right, so if you did number two already, between x and y, the distance between x and y is going to be, hopefully you got this right answer, I'm not going to show you my work since you already took the time to do it yourself. I got the square root of 18, which is approximately, notice the two squiggles, 4.24. Okay. Now, if you're doing number three, the distance between P and J, you're going to get the answer the square root of 29, and approximately that's equal to 5.39. Now, remember we said go to the nearest hundred. For the last one, ST, your distance is the square root of 130, which is approximately 11.4. Zero. And even though that's a zero down there, we're still going to keep it since we did say go to the nearest hundred. All right. So these two formulas, distance and midpoint, please have memorized. Please practice. Um, and what we're going to be doing tomorrow is a little road trip, trip activity in class with your group. So you need to think of five places in the United States that you would like to travel. And you can't copy off me or Mrs. Hurst because we don't want to see you guys on our road trip. We're going on our own vacation, so we'll bring you back souvenirs. You bring us back souvenirs, it'll be great. Right. So think about some places, brainstorm, and we can do this activity together. And we have one last thing we would like you guys to do tonight is your final challenge is after this video, please follow this link um, to make your own paper airplanes. We're going on a road trip and then bring in your airplane to class tomorrow. So we'll see you back in class tomorrow.